We, we kind of got a short tether here, buddy, but you can get a short tether. We do, just a little bit. I'll, I'll give you, a, you can take mine, that's it, got a little longer. Just gonna need a longer tether. Anyhow, a couple, a little correction here. I wouldn't say I inspired the movie The Big Lebowski. I would say that uh, I had something to inspire the character to do, okay? So it should be a different thing. self-starting guys, and, and they would have done a film noir with the channel thing in Hollywood anyway, because that was what was, you know, that's what they do. Uh, so, but it was more the dude thing. By the way, I am opening here for Piper. Piper, are you still in the house? Piper right there! There's Piper. Piper, Piper Shepard, she's awesome. Piper Shepard in the house. Kind of reminds me of, you guys know the uh, Jimi Hendrix Pete Townsend story, which is actually not you know, urban legend, but you can you know, Google it too, in which uh, <coughs> Pete Townsend comes to Jimi Hendrix before the show. This is the same Jimi Hendrix, by the way, which his first show in his life. He went to the same high school, my girlfriend went to Garfield in Seattle. And Jimmy, uh, at his first show, he was in 10th grade, at the first break, at the show, the band, they were backstage, and they fired Jimmy for being too weird. His very <laughs> first gig ever. Cut to, now we're in London, 15 years later, and there's Pete Town backstage with Jimmy before the game. He said, Jimmy, we want, uh, we want uh, to open for you. He goes, Jimmy goes, what do you mean? I'm Jimmy Hendrix, I don't have an album out yet. I have a single out, you got like, back-to-back -back number one album in the world, the number one single in the world right now. I mean, you know, you know I, should, I mean, people are going to know why they're going to hear. Pete turns to Jimmy and says, Jimmy, we've heard you play. <laughs> no way we're going after you. <laughs> so, the dude character is kind of like a holy fool, like the original St. Francis was who um, kind of tells it like it is, like a comedian, like the King's Jester, the Jester in the King's Court, or, you know, Chris Rock, or Ellen you know, Generous, or any comedian. Tell them, getting at the truth, in a world where so many of us have to put on masks every day at work, although I was surprised when I was on this radio show here at 7.30 in the morning, the Wake and Bake Show, is that what it's called? Yeah, Wake and Bake Show, 98.5. Yeah. And I'm going like, I'm, I'm out at 6.40 by the way in California, you know, having to drink massive amounts of triple cappuccinos and Red Bulls just to get to where Wake and Bake hosts were, you know, already. Right? <laughs> Great radio hosts. You know, he could even be an NPR, and those fucking people are wired too, you know, you know maybe with lattes, skinny lattes, but they're wired at 6 in the morning. <laughs> You know, on radio without being wired. Okay, so you know, I'm mean, gonna are all these people actually getting baked and then going to work? I guess the answer is yes. You actually Hell do that. Yes. Oh, yeah, we do it. Hell yes. We don't really do that in California. We get plenty baked, and yes, we know how to grow this shit too, obviously. But um, not that much in the morning, to my knowledge. You know, because we gotta do things like talk or something maybe. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's all right when you're driving heavy equipment to be like totally baked here in Colorado as you're building things and stuff like that. What were you going to say, Jeffrey? Um, I was just going to uh, say, like, you know, ramble on forever. the not. neat thing is, just like in the movie, you live down by the beach. Indeed. And uh, that's, a, that's a whole lifestyle. I used to live down in the Venice area. And uh, my God, if you, you get, anybody been to Venice, California? Yeah. Oh my God! That there, you know, you see some you see some characters down there, and uh, the neat thing is, you're you're like kind of a, a you know local uh, part of the scene there. People, people, when you walk down the boardwalk, people, you know, down there, because you it's easy to become like a Venice celebrity within the world of celebrity. Well, right? no, I would uh, uh, make a slight adjustment on that one. Venice is this. Two or three Venice. To start with, that boardwalk is the most integrated strip, at least, you know, west of some place in the East Coast. Probably in America, for sure. Because every class and race, because every kind of tourist is there. You know, it's tied with Disneyland for tourists every day. And, um, and every kind of race and everything from L.A. is there. Now there's a bit of trains and buses that go right there. So 
It's a totally integrated strip with every kind of weirdo and homeless and psycho homeless also there. Yeah. Okay, but the beauty of Santa Monica, Venice, Marina del Rey is we don't deal with traffic. I don't. I go anywhere we want on you know on nope. bikes and skateboards and you know roller bikes. Literally three people go together, little club that way. Be there in five minutes, no parking problem. Take put the skates in the backpack, change your shoes, whatever. Clean your stuff. So I kind of from, I'm from Ithaca, neighborhoods in Seattle, the Bay Area, and stuff like that. So I'm kind of a neighborhood guy. So I kind of yeah. So that's what I got down there. It's not like a, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's an interesting community. And it's not that I might be as the dude down there. I might be as the guy who comes by the pharmacy, right? Picks up this and this and that. You get to know them. So, so it's it's like a new neighborhood. It's like a, and and it, it's uh, I was in Santa Monica for years, but the kids are gone. Back to the beach. It's a laid back lifestyle, sort of like uh, is portrayed in the movement. Like, right? well, yeah. Yeah, it's, also, it's also on my walk street is where Eric Clapton was and the doors where Morrison was. We were talking 10 feet away, the next building's over and stuff. So it's a laid back down that Which side. is so cool. Now, Both here. Do you, uh, you know what I find interesting is, what do you, find? is you, have some, you have some cool uh, rock and roll friends. I know for one, uh, Huey Lewis, right? Yeah, Huey, Huey, Huey was a... Huey comes from second generation jazz guys, his father and all those guys. And so he's a real musician, musician, and he was in Ithaca going to Cornell freshman year. And, and Ithaca and Cornell were like, kind of heathens with some great, great bands. We, we would have been shot doing the shit we did in New York City. I mean, we did a lot in Ithaca that we got away with. I mean, we were to try to stop it, but you know, we just couldn't do it. Anyhow, so he had a band there, and... Uh, and then dropped out of his first year. And so he goes to he goes to Marin County, which is where my folks initially were. I have a lot of connections here because our ranch was called Mill Valley and the Green Angle Cleophis ended up training all the horses from Butch Cassidy. So we you know we're hanging out in all these steamboat and tell you right places back in the day. My family, okay, literally straight to me. Yeah. Anyhow, so Huey Cornell and starts this thing called Natural Food Express with Judy with this guy Gilbert out of San Rafael next to him. The prison there in the early water. And they delivered all the organic foods to all the organic food places in the entire Bay Area. So one day the route will be San Francisco, one day it'll be Berkeley and Oakland, one day it'll be you know, South Bay, one day it'll be Lynn. And you had like an eight track. And you drive around doing the route with him, you get up at six in the morning, you go out and party all night or maybe you get <laughs> you get in the rock, and he put this music, and I goes, dude, now this is, I'm going to talk to you about arranging. This is Frank Sinatra, live at the stand, Count Basie Orchestra, a wing arranged by Quincy Jones. Now listen to it, Frank Sinatra, not the greatest voice in the world, right. but listen to the phrasing. I uh, get kick out of you, you know, before I'm not going to do it justice. And then he goes, dude, this next music I'm going to play is reggae music, this guy's Jimmy, he's really good. That's a reggae, R-E-G-G-A-E. -E. Reggae means that was, I hear the beat goes Now, the next name, do not forget this name. This is the name that's about to change a lot of music history. Remember this name, dude. Bob Marley. Boom, he puts the music. So as we're going around stopping in every fucking health food store, bringing him, and he's his wife's sister's yogurt, Nancy's yogurt with the fruit on top, and bringing in the papayas and stuff. Dewey's giving you a musicology lesson. Right, you know, etc. And so, the short of that is all these bands when they got out of Ithaca, all these guys who are major musicians, like Ronnie goes to, to study with Natalie Boulanger, and you know, the great person, Google her Boulanger. You know, so all these guys go, fuck, we don't want to go to work. So all three of these bands, they write Dance in the Moonlight. Wow. Okay. The Orleans guys write Still the One. And yep. Huey does huge power hit. love them. Huey does power love them. Fuck, we can write a pop fucking hit, you know, so we don't have to go to work. So anyway, that was kind of some of the that's background awesome. of going way back to Huey. Well, that's great. And so let me ask the people in the audience, uh, you know, the Big Lebowski, a big part of the movie is bowling. And that, and they're, you know, that's that's kind of the, the dude and Walter's and Donnie's way of kind of just, you know, that is their lifestyle. I will not be offended if you continue to smoke while I'm here talking about that. And you can, and you can, 
Feel free to hand the I may, I may be like Snoop Dogg's people. Sundance when they say you can't smoke here. And then you go backstage later and they're smoking the joint. They confiscated for me. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So let me ask you guys. Who, who here likes the bowling? They confiscated passive bath. Do you guys go bowling, anybody in the in the room? Come on. These guys couldn't oh find a boy. Yeah, they just think bowling, smoking bowls, smoking bowls. But did you yes, smoke bowls? Yes, exactly. They can coordinate that now. Were you a bowl seven ten split? split? You think so, Piper? I don't Look think at so. that. 7-10 split. You think that has some water with oil with you guys. Like an eagle? Of course you can. You dabble. I don't think she's that kind of boy. Did you bowl though a lot? Was that part of your lifestyle? Let me give you the whole Joni state thing first. Up. Everything is in all their movies and put in their purpose if they can get a laugh out of some irony out of satire or some kind of really gruesome death. These little fucking sadists from fucking Minnesota would be killing hamsters and, and fucking, you know, wood chippers right now if they hadn't found a creative <laughs> outlet called the movies, okay? So instead they do it in the movies, okay? The bad guy. Wow. Which they create, okay? Then they kill them in gruesome ways. Anyhow, so, so Johnny has put stuff in there. Bowling is in there because I threw a party for him to run simple with all these people. I get interviewed. It's a great story. So I won't do the story, but they're noticing at the party that a movie that's essentially about a bunch of people sitting around talking instead of putting it in a bar like swingers, let's put it in the bowling alley where we can have the illusion of action and we can bring up conflict like you're over the line and we can bring up false things like the bowling tournament of which there is none in the movie. The next uh, round robin totally set up. No, no, no third act. Dude doesn't even bowl in the movie. I bowl. <laughs> he bowl. He, if you notice he doesn't point. bowl one time in Existentialist, uh, you know, <laughs> plot device. What are you wrestling? When you were 18, did you and your friends, aside from that one drink you drank, yeah. go quite a bit and do a damn good job in it? Yeah. Without you know direct riffs or something like that, more like let's say or Quentin, yeah, or homage to Sherry, right? or as Jim Cameron said to me two nights before getting the Oscar for um, starts with an A, Abyss. Huh? Uh, I mean, uh, you're talking about Avatar. Yeah, well, Cameron turns me into yeah. Avatar. We who have sent 17 artists to the Australian Air yeah. Force for a month and a half, so we don't have seen them going to the you know, library looking at National right. Geo. Send them for a month and a half to, so they can sit in situ like, you know, man, go and everybody else does. Monet. Uh, and Cameron says, yeah, I took two artists to the library. We always to watch it first time. So his opening line to me, Cameron, is, do I hope you think you did a good job making Fern Gully too. So, in other words, um, if I'm not going to, I don't quite know. But that's well, that brings up a good point. How many of you guys remember the movie Fern Gully? Yeah. Girls in the room. This dude was a huge part of it. He's the producer. We debated with eight guys and one woman for two days what hair Christmas, color hair Christmas hair would be yours. By the way, man, but, you know, off the blonde versus the brunette debated. And how skimpy we could make her fairy costume, which was beyond less. Makes Coachella look like something out of the Victorian era, okay? Let me put it that way. I mean, you know, because it's a fairy, you know, so we've got to do this whole thing. I'm going to be going to do that, but yeah, so I thought it was fun. Did you, did you like, uh, to hang out with the voice actors and all, like Tim Curry and stuff like that? Did you yeah. have to get work close to them? I got, I got, Cheech. Actually, Cheech and Chong. You brought Cheech and Chong into well, the movie. Actually, you happened, you happened to know both for various reasons. I had him come in and to do a part together, yeah, playing the Beatles. Right. The Beatles that go through the fucking, you know, side motorcycles you know, through the rainforest. And they hadn't talked in seven years. So it was the first time, so we're sitting there, like, you know, probably twice the size downstage, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know and they're just chatting it up for the same time, all on mic. You know, wow. Basically. I mean, you know, Reuniting on mic, on mic yeah. Uh, well, well, I must have didn't know it, but they didn't know it. Hey, man, that ain't cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> you reunited us, man. We didn't but, expect but it. I brought Robin into the picture, so. Um, yeah. He's like, they're Robin. And he's, well, Robin and Edie have the same high school. Yeah. Uh, Robin Williams yeah. must have, his outtakes must have, his outtakes must have been, like, all been, you know, savable. Every, I mean, there there's probably wasn't a lot of things to throw away with Robin Williams. I asked them, I called them, uh, before we made Friend Gully, I called up um, two directors, George Way Hill and um, Barry Levinson. 
to Good Morning Vietnam and yes. Garp and Garp. Yeah. Robin. And Garp or Robin has the great line. They're standing, standing with Mary Beth. Anybody have seen World According to Garp? World According to Garp? Amazing Robin group. Williams is standing with Mary Beth Hurd, his wife, professor, and a real estate agent in New England, two-story colonial house, and putt, 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 a, a little plane is coming, putting across the car, golf course, coming right at him, obviously it's going to crash. Goes right over their head, crashing the second-story window with the tail sticking out, the pilot hops out. And Robin turns to Mary Beth Hurd, really astonished, real estate, oh, real estate, uh, you know, realtor, whatever, and says, we'll take it. And I look at him like, what? And he says, what's the chance of a plane ever crashing into this house again? It's perfect. And so, that's Robin. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> so I called those guys up. That's what, that's what they're doing with uh, George. And I said, how do you fucking direct Robin Williams, right? Because obviously, you know, yeah. like you've seen him. He doesn't change. He's going to keep going. And they said, it's real simple. You say to Robin, do it my way for a couple takes. And then it's all you doing anything you want. And then when he has that look forward to, he does it. That's <laughs> most of what you. And the thing about Robin here, for these are comedy, I don't know if you really. I helped do a movie with Robin and Jonathan Winters. Which we've got all these yes. comedians. And that was his idol, right? That sure, was his top time. Movie. And all the comedians came and helped do it. And we got them together in a room. And these guys were like two black rappers going at it. You know, oh my God. Yeah. Some of the stuff they pulled out of their bag to grab back. Lines they've used a hundred times. Or a couple times. Other stuff, I was also throwing shit into the mix. The, 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 on purpose, two or three of us also in the room, throwing shit into the mix. Just so they couldn't pull it off the grab bag. And so we had to go back, 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 like tennis champs. You know? Yeah. Fucking insane, those guys here. You know, they just, they were so, the movie's called Survivor. They're so fucking crazy. And their minds are at a hyper speed, and even yours or mine are. Probably any most more mortals in here. No, I mean, yeah. and and it's amazing. Jonathan Winters was always like considered uh, somebody with that, that was so skilled like that. And then when he and Robin Williams started connecting, and he played. Anybody remember when Jonathan Winters played Mirth on on Mork and Mindy? Come on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The son that grew backwards. <laughs> Those two guys were riffing, man. And. Uh, so, hey, you guys have anything you want to talk about today? Hey, Jay might be fun. We can really rip off something good. Or I could get a story by demand, by continent, or people, or you want to keep the show going? Well, one thing I, I wanted, wanted to say you. One Thank thing you. I wanted to say here. This is what hospitality. This might be a perfect time to uh, to get something uh, going on because I don't know if you guys know this. When the, when the clock tonight. strikes midnight tonight, it's Jeff Dow's birthday, you guys. So celebrate that with him tonight. If nothing else, go to the Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. now. Not now. Yeah. 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 Premature. Guys, we got Jeff a cake. We're going to start cutting it up. Real quick. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. No, I know that, but do you want to sing Happy Birthday to We are going to do it right now. Really? We're doing it right now, guys. Right now. Who right wants now. to sing Happy Birthday to Jeff? Let's do it, guys. Come on. All right, guys, all together. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Boom. My guys, we're going to an honor, by the way. Let's hear it for the dude, my guys. What's really interesting for the guy who's basically a grassroots guy, no pun intended. I am a grassroots guy, that's true. Me, the, the, when you go to different communities, and you know, Kyle, it's like Obama saying, hey, when I went to Iowa, it wasn't that my demographic, but I won it, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay? When you go into communities like Colorado Springs, you know, swimming through all the crosses, and, and by the way, no offense, I'm, I'm with every religion, at least 60%, it's the next 40, it gets a little funky. Stuff, you know? Yeah, I'm with so you. So in the last 10, which is like you. beyond miracles and insane kind okay, of mercy, everyone. Buddha, too, you know, anyhow. So, to come to a place like this, or be to see these places where people can come and be human, and have a human spirit. And even when I went to the bar next door where there's zero dude ID stuff, except for the woman with no clothes on, didn't know because she had tipped her off or something like that. <laughs> um, and, you know, a very friendly guy struck up a thing. You know, very friendly conversation with me in the bathroom. 
you know, it's not what you thought, okay? But he was alone, and he needed somebody to talk to. His wife was working his first day off in 45 days. And I met the guy in the next seat over, it's like the next journal. So that's a friendly place. You know, good, good, good. I'm glad. Thank you man. for keeping it real. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, Speakeasy is always going to keep it real. Yeah. Thank you to my Speakeasy family. Can Thank I get a round of applause for Speakeasy? Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, guys, who's ready for a raffle? Who's ready for a raffle round? Here's my friend Chris over here. And here comes raffle round, followed by the one and only Lincoln and Edwards. Hey, speaking of the dude, uh, we got all C's right here, and they got some swag. We got the Achievers number one, which is a comic book devoted to the Big Lebowski. Yes, and, that yeah, out. Piper's going to come up and help me. Give it up for Piper Shepard. You got to love Piper. Hey, guys. She's back here again. So right here, guys, check this out. This is the Achievers number one. And it's going to be signed by me, the artist, and the inspiration for it, my buddy Jeff Dow, the real dude. He's going to sign this. So, to help out Aurora Rise, we told you what that is. That's to help out the folks that got injured in the uh, cent Century 16 theater shooting. We're going to help out Aurora Rise, help out the victims and the families by starting off our auction. This begins at $10 signed by the dude and me. Ten dollars. All you gotta do is come over here. I'm gonna have our barrel and uh, our raffle tickets. If you want to put more than ten dollars, then you'll probably be able to get it. If you put ten dollars, you probably just won't be able to get it. So put as much as you want if you want it. Secondly, right after that, come over and then we're gonna uh, auction off. The Cottonmouth Kings, all of them have signed this right here. It's a Super Stars comic book, which features the Cottonmouth Kings in it, right there. So, that also starts at $10. Help out Aurora Rise, guys. Stop by here in just a few minutes, and uh, we'll do that. And what do you got a raffle right now, right? You know what? I'm a Shepherd. Shepherd uh, I mean, Piper Shepherd wants to stand here and uh, rock with you, so she's done it. Damon Johnson and Piper Shepard, here they go. All right. We are doing a raffle, apparently. Oh, okay. I thought they said Welcome to the party, Piper. I was like, I can't do that. Welcome to the party, Piper. Hey, I'm here. I know. All right, man. Fat guys can't lift their legs. So what do we got to get? We're about to do a raffle, guys. Can I can I hit that one too? Right after her. No, they're gonna bet. They're gonna bet on it. Yeah. All right, guys, we're starting our next round of raffle. I got a lot of prizes to give away here. I got our Cooley Vape pins. Let's hear it for the Cooley Vape Whoa! pins. Have you guys been to the Cooley table? Then you're not Cooley. You ain't Cooley unless you've been there. We got a comic book from the man himself. I'm talking about Captain Cannabis, the official mascot of uh, Chromacon. Let's hear it for Captain Cannabis. The Cosmic Crusader. I got a t-shirt for our, one of our comedians coming up. I'm talking about Skippy from Family Ties, Mark Price. Who wants this t-shirt for Mark Price right here? Yeah, I heard people back there cheering. Thank you, person. And I got one of these, uh, I got one of the artwork pieces from uh, The Adventures of Jesus and Frankenstein. Guys, make sure you go online, check them out. I hear it's a badass story. DJ Diablo, you, you checked it out, right? My understanding is that like, they have the underworld. They battle you look forces good, man. of darkness. Oh, Jesus cool. Thank you. and Frankenstein team up to take on the forces. Of it. it makes sense to me. Yeah. Right. Totally. Up here. All right. 
All right, does anyone need to get their last minute raffle tickets before uh, we start this next round? Diablo's got your last minute raffle What's tickets. Anyone raffle need to grab ticket? any? Anybody? Everyone's got raffle their raffle tickets. Giveaway gifts. Everyone's happy. Everyone's got raffle tickets. Okay.